welcome to this week's episode of Net Know the Networking Show. So this week, we're going to be talking about networking and neurodiversity. So we often think, well, let's, let's rein it in a bit, rein it in. When I say neurodiversity, that encompasses a whole lot of different things. And I am by no means an expert on this. Um, but from what I do know, it includes things such as um, ADHD, ADD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, loads, loads of different things sit within that. And there are so many people who are neurodiverse that do go out to networking events that want to network, but maybe feel they don't belong or they've had a bad experience of events. And I think the you know, the experience of going to a networking event, it can be the same event, but it can be experienced very differently by very different, by different people. Um, so I just wanted to kind of firstly come from a perspective of if you are neurodiverse, some really practical stuff that you can do to help you when it comes to going to networking events, but also from the perspective of people who aren't neurodiverse and help them to understand what it might be like for them at networking events in order to build that empathy up so we can support each other and um, because I always say networking events you know it's not the hunger games we're not out for ourselves the idea is that you go to help and build relationships and support other people and building that empathy to better understand each other that can only be a good thing so first and foremost when it comes to networking events and neurodiversity um, make sure that you know what works for you so knowing yourself, first and foremost, knowing which environments are going to be more comfortable for you, which ones are going to be more triggering. If you struggle with sensory overload, for example, going to really busy, really loud networking events where there's loads of people mixing, mingling, chatting, it's very fast paced and there's lots of noise. That can be a really difficult and energy draining environment for you. Whereas if you prefer more one-to-one -one conversations, then look for events that facilitate and allow for that or look to do your networking activities one-to-one. -one. There's no reason why you can't network by having one-to-one -one meetings with people, finding and engaging with people online and then going for one-to-one -one coffees or, go, you know, even networking online one-to-one. -one. There's no, there's no rules to say that you can't do that. That's a great way to network. So knowing what works for you first and foremost, so that you are then better able to navigate your way around events. Secondly, if you find an event, you think it looks great, you really want to go to it, fantastic. Um, I've said this for different reasons previous, but getting to know the host of a networking event, it's literally their job to help you get value from attending. They want you to succeed by going to their events. They want you to have a great time. They want you to make loads of great connections. Building relationships with them, it's great for, for you to help you know facilitate those introductions. That's what they're there for. But it's also really important to have these conversations with the host. So a lot of the time, the hosts, they might not be aware of your neurodiversity and what works for you, what doesn't. And I don't mean go in and demand things, but it's that allowance for reasonable adjustment. It's asking them, you know, saying, look, um, I'd love to come to your networking event, but I really struggle with this. Would there be, for example, a quiet space that I could go to if it gets too noisy? Is there somewhere that we could go for one-to-one -one conversations? If it is that big mix and mingle style event, just or giving them feedback on their events. Again, not in a demanding, manner but helping them create better events because if it's better for people who are neurodiverse it's better for everyone you know it allows everyone to feel more comfortable more inclusive and more relaxed and then better relationships are going to be built so speak to the host and um, if there's not listed on the event description like an itinerary get in touch with the host of the event and ask them what is the itinerary just knowing before you get there what that's going to look like what the event's going to look like what the timings are for things whether the speakers there's lunch if there's lunch what options they're going to be knowing this kind of information before you get to an event can really help you feel more relaxed and comfortable if it's in a venue that you've not been to before maybe even take some time to either look on the venue's website see if they've got a floor plan so that you can like imagine you know where the rooms are and where you're going to be going which room you're going to be going into some um venues now have like 3d walkthroughs that you can like explore the venue online before you get there or if it's close enough to go to do a little trip 
you know, if you go into the event in a few weeks, it's a big event. It's a one that you really want to, you know, feel comfortable attending. Do a little practice run, drive there, see what the, the commute's like, get there um, and have a little walk around the venue. Ask what room again, if it's a big venue with loads of different rooms. So that beforehand, again, just making yourself more comfortable by giving yourself, doing a little bit of research beforehand, um, knowing what you're going to be walking into. You can help visualize it. That's really going to help you, um, you know, just feel more comfortable on the day and then you'll be less likely to bow out last minute because let's be honest, we all do it. We look for excuses not to go. Oh, it's rainy. Oh, I'm having a bad hair day. Oh, I don't feel like it today. No, no. We want to go. We want to get value. And you being there, you being there is adding value to the to the network as well. So doing a little bit of research beforehand, speaking to the host. Um, we also want to, I think, just give yourself that space to... Take a little break if you need to. Networking for everyone can be tiring. It can be energy draining, um, whether you are neurodiverse or not. But the more like, you know, if you are neurodiverse, the more likely is that it is going to be really tiring for you. It's going to be a lot of work, a lot of, you know, concentrating. Allow yourself that time in the event, especially if it's a long one, if it's a full day, absolutely. Um, give yourself that time to go somewhere, recharge your batteries, do a couple of emails, um, just take some time out. Again, knowing yourself, what do you need? that's going to help you get the most out of that day don't force it to be engaged switched on for that full three hours or that full six hours if by the end of hour two you're going to be burnt out because then you're going to miss out on all the great content from the next following four so giving yourself some breaks as and when you need them again speak to the host and just let them know what you're doing so that you don't feel weird um and there might and there probably could be other people at the same event that feel the same as you so again allowing the host the opportunity to create these these add-on bolt-on spaces for quiet zones or whatever it might be it's helping design better events for everyone another option is to create your own events. So this might be something that you've thought of before and you've maybe explored, but you know, if you've experienced a lot of networking events and you've really struggled, think in reflection, why is it that you've struggled? What could have made that event better? What could have helped you get more enjoyment from it and just made you feel more safe, more comfortable? And then create events for yourself. There's absolutely no reason why. There's nothing stopping you from creating your own events and putting them on to share information information, knowledge to network in ways that make you feel good, there's going to be other people out there that are going to love that as well. So that is always an option. But I think the big thing for this is just giving yourself a bit of a break um, and allowing yourself to um, explore different event formats that do and don't work for you. Um, having that level of self-awareness that allows you to feed that back to the hosts in a productive way to help them design and create better events that are more inclusive, that make people more comfortable and more safe. And if you can, you know, articulate that and speak to people and by sharing that and letting them know, do you know what, that kind of event format I really struggle with or I find it really um I get a lot of anxiety from like having to eat while I stand up at a networking event for example you know there's loads of little things those little things they just need little tweaks and they can make a huge difference so sharing that back with the hosts or looking at ways that you can maybe even create your own events to create those spaces for other people absolutely amazing but neurodiversity and networking I think go hand in hand and they sometimes can clash but they don't need to and the way that we can stop that clash from happening is just by having conversations just telling people how you feel what works for you what doesn't being open and honest about it so that we can build empathy with each other with the hosts of the events or you can create your own and welcome more people and just create more inclusivity in general so I hope that was useful. Hope that gave you some really practical tips, that, things that you can be doing to make networking events more enjoyable for you, more accessible maybe. And also thinking about how you can um, help the event hosts themselves create those more inclusive spaces that make everyone have a more enjoyable experience. So that is it for this week. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. So please do comment below your experiences, especially um, if you are neurodiverse or you've got people in your team are, how have they found networking events? And if you know someone who's neurodiverse and that networks or would like to network, please do share this with them in the hope that it helps. So that is it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure we subscribe, of course, like and share. And I shall see you at next week's episode. 
a Liquid Studios production.